for. Ang ganda na lang. Ang grace na yun. Para hindi na kayo magtiis pa ng uh, dalawang stanza. Shall we all stand up please and open our Bibles in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to read uh, four verses. Verses 7 to 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Are you there, amen? Okay, let us read this in unison. Ready? Read. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then am I strong. Father, we are thankful for once again giving us this opportunity not only to approach you on your throne of grace boldly, but also, Lord, to boldly preach and study your word. I pray, Lord, that you will help us to see and appreciate your grace tonight more than we have appreciated it. I pray, Lord, that tonight we will see that the story of our lives, O oh God, is only because of your grace. Since our conception, until the time that we leave this earth and all throughout eternity, if we are saved, then it is only by your grace. So I pray, Lord, that as we study your word tonight, you will just illumine our hearts and our mind that we may see nothing but you and the grace that you have bestowed to each and every one of us. May you be glorified in our midst. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you very much. Bukas ng bukas ito. So, I believe it was uh, about 40 years ago when there was a meeting in the United States among Christians, and they are talking about what is it that separated Christianity from other religion. So there were several answers that were given. One is the resurrection, and they said that there are also other religion that believes in the raising of the dead. And they said that uh, maybe the uh, difference between uh, Christianity and the other uh, religion is what we call uh, our uh, objective. But then again, other religion have uh, several objectives that they, that they teach or doctrine, similar doctrine that they teach. So, when they could not agree to what set the uh, Christianity apart from other religion, there was this prominent Christian named C.S. Lewis who came into the room and asked the question, what's happening? And when they said that we cannot agree with what specific thing that separates Christian from other religion, he said it's easy. What separates Christianity from other religion is grace. Why? Because grace is the foundation of Christianity. And grace is what we call the uh, confidence of the children of God. For by grace, the lost are found. And because of grace, even though before we are blind, but now we can see. Other religion teaches that you need to do something in order to be saved. But only Christianity teaches that somebody did something so that we will be saved. That we receive something that we cannot merit because it was freely 
given to us by God. And grace is the one that separates Christianity from other religion. Amen. Other religion cannot claim, Buddhism cannot claim that. Because they have to, to live a good life in order to have a good karma. Uh, Hinduism cannot do that. They believe in the same thing. And other religion cannot claim that because only in Christianity that somebody died in the stead of other people. So what is grace? We know that grace is simply unmerited favor. It is a favor given to us because we cannot merit it. If we will try to merit grace, then it will be no longer grace, but it will be work. If we will go to Romans chapter 4, and verse number 4, if I'm not mistaken, let's look at uh, that, please. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of death. So if you can work your way to grace, then it is not grace anymore. But it is a payment to the actions that you have done. So grace is something that we do not merit because grace is something that we did not do. And grace is something that we cannot merit no matter what we do in our life. So in the verses that we have read, we can see that this is a part of the life of the Apostle Paul. And the passage that we have read is something that should remind us that grace works in our weakness. Amen. Actually, grace says that our weakness is a good thing. Because grace says that when you are weak, then grace is strong. When we cannot do what we have to do for God, then grace will supply us the strength that we need in order for us to accomplish what God wanted us to accomplish in our life. So grace is something that is very important in our lives as a Christian. Amen. So number one, we can say that grace is sufficient when it comes to salvation. Grace is sufficient when it comes to salvation. In uh, The Bible says, uh, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So our salvation is only by the grace of God. We are not saved, as I have said, by our own works, but we are saved by the grace of God when we put our faith and trust in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us look at First Timothy chapter 1, verses 15 to 16, please. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief, says the Apostle Paul. How be it for this cause I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should be which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. So we can see that our salvation is only by the grace of God. It is because of the mercy of God that we are not consumed, the Bible says. And grace can do wonders in the life of a person. You see, there was this story that happened in New York under the ministry of uh, a pastor named Wilkerson. Actually, this Wilkerson, uh, I believe, is still alive and is now pastoring in California. So he was then in New York, and there was this person named Nikki Cruz. And Nikki Cruz was a, uh, a leader of uh, one of the toughest gangs in New York City. It is obviously a gang composed of Hispanics. And then not only that, but he has a Satanist for a parent. So both his parents are members of the Satan's church in New York City. So when he was young, he was brutally abused by his uh, parents so he grew up a hardened man without love and full of hate in his heart and he's always saying that i wanted to do others what my what my mother did unto me that is the uh, uh, dark golden rule do unto others what my mother did unto me so he says that i used to feel good when i hurt people 
But then, later in his life, he said that honestly or privately, I didn't feel good whenever I hurt people. Privately, I was alone. I was lonely. And I became like, and, and a loneliness became like a seductive woman to me that crawled inside my chest and ate me. I was there twisting and fighting. He said, I felt so lost. Only two people saw the desperate condition of Nikki's heart. One was a psychologist. And the psychologist told him five times that there is a dark side in your life and nobody can penetrate. So Nikki, he said, you are walking straight to jail, the electric chair, and hell. And there is no hope. That's what the psychologist told him. But he said the other was a pastor named Wilkerson. This Wilkerson approached him, risking his life to tell Nikki that there was hope. So when this pastor told him about the love of God, that God has the power to change his life, he started cursing the pastor and he started to spit in his face and hit him and told him, I don't believe in what you say and you get out of my life. Nikki never expected what he heard Wilkerson say next to him. Wilkerson replied to Nikki, you could cut me up into 1,000 pieces and lay them in the street. Every piece of me will still say that God loves you and I love you. And Nikki says, it did damage. A good damage in my brain and in my heart. I began to question and for two weeks I could not sleep thinking about God, thinking about love, and thinking about change. Nikki and his gang showed up at one of Wilkerson's rallies. One by one, they gave their lives to Christ. It was the crucifixion, it was the death of Jesus on the cross that grabbed Nikki. He said, I was choked up with pain and my eyes were fighting and tears became to come down and more tears from my eyes as I was fighting and then I surrendered, says Nikki. I let Jesus hug me and I let my head rest on his chest. I said, I'm sorry, forgive me. And for the first time in my life, I told somebody, I love you. He said, Jesus, I love you. The love Nikki got in return radically changed his life. And he said, when I had opened my eyes, I got a new heart. I've been born again. And I became a child of the Lord. And that is grace. If not for grace, it will not happen in the life of Nikki. So it only proves that, our, that grace is sufficient for our salvation. Amen? Not only that, but number two, grace is sufficient for our supply. Grace is sufficient for our supply. So, if you will be asked, how many gallons of water are in the ocean? Do you know the answer? The answer is 3.61 times 10 to the 20th power. Ah, Behera. That's only by grace that I know the answer. That is 3612 with 21 zeros after that. Ganun yun. How many stars are in the known universe? Oh, Brother Alex, ikaw, may hili ka dyan. Ilan? Ang approx ang, uh, they approximated that there are 70 sextillion stars in the known universe. That is 70 followed by 22 zeros. Magkaroon ka lang ng kahit ganyang real. Buhay ka na. Amen? And how many grains of sand are in the world? You know the answer? Is 75 followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 11, 
30 zeros. That is the number of sand in the grain of sand in the world. So, Pastor, how did you know that? I didn't know it actually. But even if all the numbers that I have said is wrong, what is right is this that God's grace is bigger than all these numbers. God's grace is inex inexhaustible. We cannot exhaust the grace of God. You could empty the ocean, you could empty the beaches of all the water and the sand, and you can pluck every star from the sky and every leaf from the trees. Even if you have done all of those things, God's grace has only begun. Grace, the grace of God is something that we cannot exhaust. Therefore, whatever need we may have, the grace of God is sufficient to supply all of our needs. Amen. There was this story of a, a man, a Christian person, who said that you give this money to that pastor. But I do not want you to give that money, to that large amount of money to that pastor, but I want you to give it to him every month. So what he did is he gave that pastor the money, and then he said, more to follow. And the following month, the pastor received the money, and the note says, more to follow. And it goes on for months, and it goes on for years, until the time that the pastor died, and he didn't even know if the money kept on coming. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to submit to you tonight, that is the grace of God. When God forgives our sins, there is more forgiveness to follow. When God justifies us in the righteousness of Christ, there is more to follow. When God adopts us into his family, there is more to follow. When he prepares us for heaven, there is more to follow. When he gives us grace for every need that we have, there is more to follow. When he helps us to old age, there is more to follow. Even when we arrive in the world to come, there is still more to follow. God's grace will always be supplied every time, every need, and the grace of God will never stop. Amen? That is God's grace. Look at Ephesians 2, 6 and 7. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. The Bible says, And it raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. So the grace of God is sufficient for our needs. What do you need today? There is the grace of God that will meet that need. What, what is it that is uh, uh, needed in order to complete you? It is not that you are nine and you are the one that completes me, but the grace of God will always complete us because God's grace is sufficient for our supply. Amen? Not only that, but number three, grace is sufficient in suffering. So I was reminded of the uh, uh, Everything Bible. So you have to tune in every 6.30 in the morning on Everything Bible and listen to the uh, devotion of John uh, with uh, the special participation of Chuchut, the destroyer. So if, if you will uh, watch that from time to time, you will see there Chuchut. So, but grace is sufficient in suffering. Look at 1 Peter 5.10. The Bible says, But the God of all grace, who hath called, you, called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. You see, there are four things that the grace of God will do to us personally. Number one, it will make us perfect. It means to say, it will make us matured. It will make us equipped. So even though uh, we are experiencing suffering in our lives, the grace of God can turn that suffering for us to be equipped in the ministry 
that God will give to us in the future. Not only that, but it will also establish us. It means that we are going to become strong. We are going to become sturdy. It is like we are built upon a rock that even though storms may come, that even though elements may come, that even though there will be problems that may come in our lives, we will not be moved because we are standing upon a rock. And that is what grace will do to us whenever we experience suffering in our lives. Not only that, but uh, it will strengthen us. Whenever you experience suffering, it will make you stronger if you will allow the grace of God to work in your life. Amen. They said that the strongest people are those who graduated from the Hard Knock Hard University. Even Fred Aguilar knew the importance of problems in life. He said in his song that those who experience problems early in life usually are the ones who will become stronger when they come to their adult life. So sufferings are being permitted by God to make our faith stronger and it can only happen because of the grace of God. And not only that, but it will settle us. It will give us support in everything that we may need in life. So where is the grace of God there, uh, Pastor? The grace of God is here. Notice the word, after that he have suffered a while. Meaning to say, because of God's grace, our suffering will not last long. Our suffering will only be for a little while. Or our suffering is only a small extent of time. But the result of this little suffering or small suffering is going to be an eternal focus on the strength of the Lord. So if you don't feel like God is answering your prayers, be patient. It will only be for a while. God is already as already sent the answer to your prayers. You just have to wait for a while. Be patient. All suffering will be gone, whether you like it or not. Because weeping, the Bible says, will only endure for the night, but hope surely will come in the morning. So, I do not know what, what sufferings we are experiencing right now. I do not know if you are experiencing it. But I can sh surely tell you that I am ex experiencing so much suffering in my life. Even today. And, and maybe in the immediate future. But I am hoping that the grace of God will carry me through. Because I really do not know what to do anymore. I really do not know how to carry on. I really do not know how to live one more day in this world. So I am counting on the grace of God. And I do not understand how it will work. I do not understand how it will happen. And I do not understand how God can carry me through. But my only hope is the grace of God. Nothing more. Nothing less. I, I can relate to what the Apostle Paul says that, Lord, remove this thorn in the flesh. Three times, Paul, I besought God for him to remove this thorn in my flesh. But the answer that he received from God is that my grace is sufficient for thee. I ask God to remove this thorn, if I may use the uh, phrase of the Apostle Paul, I have asked God to remove this thorn in my flesh, maybe a thousand times, but still there. So I can just presume that the answer of God is that my grace is sufficient. I know that God's grace is sufficient, but I do not know is I, if I am up to the grace of God. Because God will always supply grace, whether you like it or not. There will always be grace. Remember, Paul says that he is the chiefest of sinners. And yet, the grace of God 
saved him. You can find the most hardened sinner in the Bible. God's grace is enough to save that person and God's grace is enough to sustain that person. You can find a person who suffered so much and yet Job was carried by the grace of God. So if I will compare myself to these people, what I may be experiencing is nothing compared to them. But you see, sometimes there are things that may affect somebody that may not affect another, people, another person. There may be things that somebody can easily carry, but there are things that peop so other people may not be able to carry. So the only hope that we can have in these extremities in life is the grace of God. Because we do not merit any forgiveness. We cannot merit any second chance. We cannot merit any help. If we will receive any of these things, then it is only by the grace of God. Amen? Because it is sufficient in suffering. Grace is also sufficient in sin. You see, the song says that grace is greater than all our sin. Look at Romans chapter 5 verse 20. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. What is the verse saying? That there is no sin or amount of sins in this word <coughs> that grace cannot forgive. That grace cannot cover. That is why there is no person in this world who can say that I am beyond God's salvation. That I am beyond God's forgiveness. Even Hitler, if he will seek the grace of God, he will receive that grace from God. Even uh, the person who killed so many Cambodians, Pol Pot, if he will seek the grace of God, then he will receive the grace of God. There is no person and there is no sinner or sin that is beyond the grace of God. Because even if sin will continue to abound more and more and more, then the grace of God will engulf all of those things because God's grace is sufficient for all the sin in this world. Amen? You cannot out -sin God's grace. There is nothing that you can do that you will be beyond the reach of the grace of God. You may have as many sins as the sound of the, of, of the beaches or the stars in the skies or the gallons uh, of water in the ocean, but God's grace exceeds your sin. But sometimes you say, but you do not understand. You do not know what I committed. I, I, I don't have to know. I do not have to understand. But what you need to understand, that God's grace is sufficient for your sin. So no person in this world can, can say that I have no more hope. No person in this world can say that I am beyond saving, that I am beyond repair, that I am beyond being used again by God. No matter what you do, then the grace of God will abound more and more. Amen? Not only that, but grace is sufficient in service. Amen? 2 Corinthians 9, 8. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. So it does not matter where God place you. What matters is that God will supply you the grace in order for you to accomplish His will wherever God place you. Amen? Your work may be easy, he will give you the grace. Your work may be difficult. He will give you the grace because his, his grace is sufficient for every strength that we need in order for us to uh, serve the Lord in our capacity as a Christian. So there is no place in this world 
that God's grace cannot supply the strength that you need in order for you to serve the Lord. But the only question is that, are we willing to serve God? Do we want to be a servant of God? Do we have a servant's heart? You see, our responsibility is to say yes to God and God will supply the grace in order for us to accomplish the things that God wants us to accomplish in this life. Amen? And not only that, but lastly, grace is sufficient in death. So, since our conception and until we die, we can see that the grace of God is there. Look at Romans 8, 38 to 39. How can somebody say this if not for the grace of God? For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come. 39. Nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Even death cannot separate us from the love of Jesus because of the grace of God. Amen? Philippians 1, 21 to 23. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. How can death be gain? It is by the grace of God. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor, yet what I shall choose I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Question, who among us tonight can, will choose death over life? I don't know if you will do that. I may have been in the brink of that. But uh, still, I, I, I believe that I will still choose life over death. But how can a person choose death over life? It is only by the grace of God. Do you know why we do not choose death over life? It's because we're afraid of death. Even though we know that we are saved. Even though we know that we are on our way to heaven. Even though we know that death for a Christian is heaven's door opening so that we can meet the Lord and to be with Him forever. And yet, no Christian will ever choose death unless they are in extreme situations. Like they have cancer, fourth degree. And they're hurting. You may say, Lord, please, take me home. When you are very old and cannot move anymore, you may choose death and tell God, please, Lord, take me. At kumarami kang utang, sinisingil ka, kaliwat kanan, taas baba, gabi umaga, Panginoon, kunin nyo na ako nang matakasan ko na ang mga pinagkakautangan ko. Amen? Only in extreme situation. But the Apostle Paul can choose death over life. He says, far better. Why? Only because of the grace of God. Do you know why? Because those people who really understand the grace of God will never be afraid of death. Do you know why? Because there is dying grace. Or the grace that we may have not needed before, but it will be supplied to us by God. At the time of our death. Look at Acts chapter 7, verse 54. And we will read until we finish the chapter and maybe the two, uh, two verses of chapter 8. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, Look up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus is standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. 
Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not the sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at the time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. Question. Did Stephen felt the pain of those stones? There's no indication. While they're stoning him, he's talking to God, he's asking for their forgiveness, and I like what the Bible says. He fell asleep. It is as if he did not even feel the fan of death. Why? God will give us grace. Even, even at the time of our death, if our lives are lived according to the will of God. So that's grace. Amen? We do not merit that favor. But because of God's love, he has given us grace and that grace that God has given to us is sufficient in everything that we may need in life in every aspect of our lives and in every stage of our lives if we will just allow the grace of God to live through us then we can also show grace To those who are not deserving. And to be honest with you. It will only happen. Because. Of the grace of God. Amen. Shall we stand up please. Father we thank you for the time that you have given us. As we 